You know, I was praying about getting the opportunity to share it with you today. You guys ever seen that movie Forrest Gump when he's with his buddy and he's over by the uh, by his sergeant? He goes, "And don't do something stupid and get yourself killed." And he looks at me and goes, "I sure hope I don't let him down." Why well, sure hope I don't let the Lord down today? Amen. Amen. All right, listen, we're going to do something just a little bit different this morning, okay? If you're able, I want you to stand. And if not, that's quite all right. We're going to do something we haven't done for a while. I want you to get up while we play this song. Sing it if you know it. And go shake somebody's hand that you may not have shaken before. Or go to a place. Go to somebody that you haven't said hello to or give them a hug this morning. Okay? And sing along with this song if you know the words. If not, just have a good time. Amen? All right. You need to do it. You need to do it. Crank it up, Bobby. Come on, church. I can go back now. Know this song? Go tell somebody you love it. Now you see, you gotta go see somebody. Spit louder. Go see somebody you love. Good morning. You guys know the verse? See if you know it. Here we go.
You know, this is really getting to be a stinker. How's that? There you go. There you go. Lord have mercy. Did you get that on videotape? Yeah, you did. Good. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. That's it. I ate up all the time. The title of the message, Carrie goes, what's the title of the message? I said, change your heart, change your mind, change your environment, change your life. Change. I should have went that way because she looked at me she says, oh, that's too much to put on there. And I said, okay, so I'll, I'll announce it. So it goes, change your mind, change your heart, change your environment, change your life. You know what's in all of us? We get fed up with worldly thinking. We call it stinking thinking. You know... We know what is truly right and wrong in this world. Amen? We do. And when we get saved, we need to learn to think differently. We need to think like Jesus. We need to concentrate on the solutions to our problems and our worries instead of the trouble itself. Look for the solution. Jesus had us. Well, God had a solution for our sin problem and it was sending his son on the cross. He didn't concentrate on us. He concentrated on the solution. God's Word has the right information and answers for us to use to get things, to get us through things, and to solve our dilemmas. When we start thinking like Jesus, our mindset changes. We see the good and the potential in people that we never saw before. Isn't that amazing? You look at folks different. You used to think that, oh, there's no hope for that person. Well, you know they could have said the same thing about us. But all of a sudden, we have a mind like Christ. We go, there's good in that man. Or that's good in that young boy. Or that woman or that young girl. There's good in it because if God placed it in me, He definitely placed it in them. Maybe it's my responsibility to help Him bring it out. Don't know. Could be. We just need to be ready to do that when the time arrives. Amen? Amen. It's amazing when you start to change things in your life. How everything around you changes. So... How do we get to about becoming different? How do we get to be being set apart? How do we get to becoming a new person? Becoming who we are truly meant to be. So I've got a list of here of things of who we are truly meant to be. God laid this upon my heart. Becoming a true, honest, forgiving, no fear, Bible reading, Bible teaching, gospel sharing, Testimony giving, church going, church inviting, song singing, hand raising, hand shaking, hug giving and receiving, God fearing, Jesus loving, saved by grace, delivered in Jesus Christ a Christian. Amen. Amen. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot. Won't you say it? <laughs> True, honest, and forgiving. No fear. No fear. Bible reading. Bible reading. Bible teaching. Bible teaching. Gospel sharing. Testimony giving. Testimony giving. Church going. Church going. Church inviting. Church inviting. Song singing. Song singing. Hand raising. Hand raising. Hand shaking. Hand shaking. Hug giving. Hug giving. Not this and hug receiving. Hug receiving. God fearing. God fearing. Jesus loving. Jesus loving. Saved by grace. Saved by grace. Delivered and believers in Jesus Christ. Deliver believers in Jesus Christ. Today you go, Christian. 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 Amen. 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 That's who we are. That's who we should become. That's who God intends us to be. And there's probably a list even longer than that. Because if we're made in God's image, He's got great things for you. So in order to become these things, here are four steps I find very important to become able to do and live out all the things that you and I just repeated to one another. The first one is to change your mind. Even as believers, we can fall back into worldly thinking, right? Right? Amen. There we go. Doesn't turn out well, does it? Our light starts to grow dim. Our mindset and attitude changes. Even new believers, even the new folks that just gave their life to Christ, deep down inside they know that they cannot slip back into worldly thinking and be able to please the Lord, let alone themselves and the ones around us. Can't happen. That's what I got called stinking thinking. 
One way of thinking was the world which caused us nothing but heartache when we truly think about it and then thinking like Jesus opened up a whole new world to where it made things right. So if you have the Bibles, if you will turn to Romans, we're going to chapter 12, verse 2. Verse 2 says this, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Right there He's saying, God changed mindset. Through the Holy Spirit, He is able to do that. We no longer have to rely upon ourselves to make the changes. God will do it for us when He inserts the Holy Spirit into your heart when you become a believer in Jesus Christ. It will happen. Trust me. Because there's no way that when He's in your heart, there's no way that it cannot happen. Amen? And then if you still have your Bibles, let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says this, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, praiseworthy, Think about such things. It's about what you are letting your mind go to every day. Is it the good things that you know that God has poured out upon you and the blessings that He's given you and the abilities that He has instilled upon your heart to do? Or do we think about, woe is me, it's somebody else's fault and somebody else had something to do with the way I feel today. The biggest bunch of baloney I've ever heard in my life. Because when Jesus is in, is in you, you are the one that makes the decision. What type of attitude you're going to have this day. If you allow the Holy Spirit to flow freely through you, it's going to be a good day. I know, but i got to go back to work. It's going to be a good day. Because what, 5 o'clock rolls around sometime. Or if your second shift is 11, the third shift is 7 a.m., I don't care. It's going to end. But here's the thing, you're in that workplace because God wants to work through you to share Jesus Christ. You are in the right position at the right time because He's changed your mindset. Amen. And if He hasn't, it's because you and I have thrown up the roadblock. Period. Because He loves you. Amen? Man, who wrote all these notes? I did, because I need them. So if you changed your mind, what comes next? Well, if you change your mind, you're going to change your heart. And this is what it says. By the changing and the renewing of your mind, we can't help but to change the condition of our heart. Because you start to think different. And if you're thinking different, you want to feel different. Amen? Amen. Here's why we will want and desire to change our heart. If you would... Turn to Mark chapter 7, please. Mark chapter 7, verses 21 through 23 says this. Now this shook me to my core when I read this. For from within, out of man's hearts come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, Rudeness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from the inside and make a man unclean. We are not immune from that as being in the flesh. That's why we would want to change your heart because we don't want these things to come out. Amen? We want to sweep them away. We want to put them away where they belong, which is out of our lives. We go, I don't have any of that in me. Stop and think about what your thought process was over the last week or any situation that you may have. My wife and I were talking, yeah, I had a pretty nasty idea, pretty nasty feelings in my heart over a situation. And her words to me is always, remember who you are. Don't. Do you have to tell me that? She goes, yeah, because that's what you practice and that's what you preach in our home. Oh, God, tell me that. Yeah. Because my mindset is supposed to be changed. And then when my mindset is changed, I have to change my heart. That's a mess, isn't it? You read that verse, that is a mess. Satan loves to wallow in that crap. He does. He loves to turn your heart inside out and just wallow in all that. But then when we go to 2 Corinthians, if you would, please turn there with me.
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says there, says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You're brand new, folks. Squeaky clean. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who can, uh, re reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So I looked up what reconciliation means. It says this, restoring of friendly relationships. I put loving. God wants to restore your relationship with him. He's given us every opportunity to do so. Through falling on our knees and saying, God, just forgive me. I need to back, be back where I need to be, where I belong. That's in your presence. He wants to clean us up. He wants to reconcile that relationship that through our sin, we have separated ourselves from. That's you and I. So he'll clean up your heart if you allow him. It's getting our heart right with the Lord. It says the old self and the condition of this heart is washed clean through the reconciliation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. amen. We're brand new. I like that. How many here like brand new things? There we go. Hands are coming up. I love brand new things. But you know what's even better? Is when you get up in the morning and you look in that mirror again, it's a brand new day. Amen. If you've asked God for forgiveness, it is a brand new start. You can make things right today and stay on that path that He's given you and have fun doing it and loving every minute of it and knowing that there's trials and tribulations coming. But when your heart is changed, you'll know how to get through them and get over them. Man, we serve a wonderful God, don't we? Amen. How about this? If somebody would do this for me, I like class participation. Would somebody look up Psalms, chapter 51, verse 10? And who would like to read it? Chapter 51, verse 10. Psalms, chapter 51, verse 10. Create in me clean heart, O oh God, and a renew a right spirit within me. And then verse 11 says this, Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. That's changing heart. Don't leave me, God. I can't do it on my own. Don't want to do it on my own. The Bible says when I accepted your son that you would never leave me or forsake me. So now my heart has changed. I need you in that hole that's in there that only you can fill. And once you're in there, please don't leave me. Because I hate, how many hate that empty feeling when you get up in the morning that you feel that there's nothing good that's going to come of that day? And then you got to start thinking, my mind has changed, my heart has changed. He's with me. Today's going to be a good day. Somebody is going to see Jesus in me today. Whether I get a chance to speak it or if I'm just living it out. How cool is that? He wants to use you. So now we've changed our mind. We've changed our heart. What is next? God changed your environment when these things change. Because it says changing your mind and your heart will give you the desire to change your environment. So everybody goes, well, what's my environment? How about the TV shows that we watch, the music that we listen to, the attitude you have at home or at work, the places you go, the things you talk about, the things you do when you're around people, or how about this, when you're on your own, by yourself, no one else is around, the people you spend time with, all of these things represent your environment. It's not just when you're at home sitting in your easy chair, this is my environment, I'm not dig it. Nope, everything else comes along with it, amen? That's your environment. You were put there because you were meant to change it for the benefit of others, just not for yourself. Do you ever think about that? When your heart is changed, you want to change things around you. You can't help it. Why is that? Because you want to uplift the things that God is changing in your life. You can't be a health nut and go to a candy store. I've tried it. It does not work. You can't be a musician and go into places that you used to play at 
and feel the Holy Spirit and allow God to have you use your talents for Him in places where you know that that is not going to be received. Now, will He send you in there? It's possible. You know, I'm praying that man, He send Jared's band or our band, you know, into places where nobody else is going to preach the gospel, see people saved, and then get out of Dodge. <laughs> So if our mind is changed, our heart is changed, then we know the good and the bad of all the things that we just talked about, the places we go, the things we talk about, our attitudes. You ever notice that? You start to rethink about your activities for the day and where you're at, what your environment is. You ever do that? Man, this just isn't right. I just don't feel comfortable here. This is not where I belong. I need to change my environment. Can't go there anymore. Can't talk like that. Can't do those things, whether I'm around people or if I'm by myself. My attitude at home definitely has to change for the better, for myself, for my Lord and Savior. Here we go, for my family and children. It's got to change. Then we know the good and the bad of the things we just talked about, and we should and need to change those things to support and lift up our Christ-like mindset and the great new condition of our heart. You have to support those changes. The Lord, you know your Lord and Savior is right there to give you everything that you need to do so. If we don't do it, it's just because we refuse to do so. And I have been, I have worn those shoes. Don't want to do it, don't feel like it today. It's just about me today. My mind is terrible. My heart ain't the right place. My environment, I don't go to care. Then all of a sudden I start looking around. That's my fault. What was my attitude when I got up? What was my mindset? My mindset? What was my heart? And where did I go? What did I do? God will send you into the lion's den and kick that lion out. Because Jesus needs to be in those people's lives. Amen. These things go hand in hand, don't you think? Your mindset, condition of your heart, your environment. Do they all work together, yes or no? Yes. Amen. I got one. Can I get an amen over here? Yes. Can I get a praise of Louis somewhere? Praise of Louis. Okay. I personally can't see it be separate. All three of those things have to work together. But the good thing is God has given you those abilities to do so. So what do you think is next? You changed your mind. You changed your heart. You changed your environment. What do you think will happen next if those three, those three things have taken place in your heart and in your life? You're going to change your life. Amen. You're going to change your life. You start to get enveloped by the Holy Spirit and it just envelops you. You can't help but make those changes. So, what does the Bible say about changing my life? So I found Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Amen. You don't have to rely upon yourself anymore to try to get through this life because you're not supposed to. You and I will mess it up. Does that mean that we're, that we're incapable of doing it? No, we can, we, can, we can mess it up pretty good. We don't need nobody else to help us. Can we make things right? To a point. To the, world, to the world's moral standpoint, we can make things right. But to God's way of thinking and His standpoint, we need Him to make our path right. There's no two ways about it. We can't do it, which is fine. That's fine with me because I'll mess it up in a heartbeat. I don't want to be responsible for making the pathway of my life because the path to the cross is straight. I'm about as crooked as a dog's hind leg. I'll be out this way. So with God centered, I'm headed straight to the cross. And I pray that people see that in me and I pray that they see it in you so you can head them to the cross too because they need it. God's coming quick and we need to bring as many people to the cross as we can. Why? Because He didn't want anyone to perish. We learn from these verses that we can trust God to lead in the day-to-day -day things of our lives. Isn't that amazing? He will lead you 
day by day, minute by minute, week by week, hour by hour, He will lead you. You are not weak. You are strong when you set yourself aside and allow the Lord God Almighty to direct your life. And trust me, it is just like Cedar Point. It is a roller coaster ride, but I'll tell you what, I will go. I was never a coaster guy until I got on the rides. I was never a Jesus guy until I got saved. And I will never, I'll cut mine to get to, the, <laughs> to get to that ride of Jesus. He's an amazing God. He will change your mind. He will change your heart. He will change your environment. And then He'll change your life. Have you had a life-changing experience yet? When I got saved, you better bet. Was it a rough ride? You better bet. Is it better now? You better bet. Because these things are in play in my life. Allow them to be in play in your life. We don't have to rely on man and our own knowledge and wisdom. We don't. Man will let you down, right? Yeah. Scripture tells us that. We learn and rely on His knowledge and wisdom. He will make you a wise man or woman because He desires them for wisdom to share. You know, folks, we don't trust in our jobs, our possessions, our social status, or our wealth. If we do, we're doomed to fail. Because those things are not long living. And other things to make our, us whole or happy. Have you ever tried to place something in your heart to make you whole and happy? That's worldly? I have. It stinks because it doesn't work. And I've tried cramming it in every way. Oh, this is going to make me happy. New drum set will make me happy. You know, learning a new song will make me happy. More than another yard. Doesn't make me happy. <laughs> Doing something I think it's going to make me happy, which I need to be looking towards Him. He makes me whole. He makes me happy. He makes my life worth living. He has my purpose. Amen. He has yours. Have you ever just asked Him, God, whatever you have for me, lay it on me because I need it? Wait till He sends the Holy Spirit to envelop your life, it'll flip you out. You'll go, where in the world has that been? Well, we stuck it in the closet every time, every time we got a little bit close because we were too, we were too wrapped up in allowing things like our jobs, our possessions, our social status, and our wealth to make us whole and happy. But listen, we trust in Him and His plan for our lives. That's what makes us whole and happy. Amen? Amen. Why is that? Why do we do that and allow that to happen? It's not only to glorify our Lord and Savior but to fulfill our purpose and to inspire someone else to do the same. To change their mind, change their heart, change their environment, to change their life. And they'll tell you, my life's pretty much okay. I'm good. I'm all right. We don't do this. Do you really think so? We go, I understand. I was there at one time myself. But if you got a minute, I'll show you in here. Somebody showed me what I found to show you that you can change your life. And man, man, is it worth it. The old has passed away, the new is here. Can you get excited about that? Amen. Man, you gotta tell somebody about that. You gotta live it, you gotta show it. You need to become a disciple, and you need to disciple somebody. You need to share what you've got in your heart with somebody else and teach them how to do the same. So they can go out and do the same too. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love you with every bit of my heart. And I pray that God instills in you today to share yourself with someone so they can do the same with what you did at one time. Amen? Is it worth it? You better bet it. Is it difficult sometimes? Yep. But there's some times where it is so easy that the door will be so wide open, you'll stumble right through it. And when you start doing it and sharing it with somebody, watch the look on their face because you may be the only Jesus that they'll ever see. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. You know, you're a blessing to me and my family. 
We've been here quite a while. And it's amazing to see folks change. And to see them grow and to want to change. And to make their life represent Jesus. I can't wait for somebody else to come through those doors to where they're just hungry. To where we all can be a part of that change for them. Amen? Amen. All right. Would you bow your heads with me, please? It's amazing what our God can do when we just ask Him to change things in our lives from our own personal point and for our relationships in our lives that we give it to God and allow Him to mold it and do with it as He sees fit in our everyday life and the people around us. He loves you. You are most important in His eyes to show that change in your life daily and to share that with somebody. If you haven't done it in the past, you're not too late because He's going to open up the doors for you to do that again. But let me ask you a serious question, and it's been repeated throughout the whole sermon. Have you changed your mind? And have you allowed your mind to change your heart? And if your heart has changed, have you honestly made an attempt to change your environment for the better? And through those things, have you changed your life through the power of Jesus Christ? See, when you went around this morning, we were singing that song. You stepped out of your comfort zone. You've changed your mindset. I'm going to go see somebody this morning that I haven't shook hands with in a while. I was in a different part of the sanctuary that I may have not ever been before. And it makes a difference in your life when you step out, doesn't it? With every head bowed and your eye closed, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you truly given your life to Jesus? Are you saved and bought by the blood of our Savior? Has there been any time in your life that you've asked Him to come into your life and save you, forgive you of your sins? If you haven't, here's an opportunity. It's just, we call it the sinner's prayer. And you're just talking with your God one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to say it out loud. But here's the point. You do have to mean it. It goes, Lord, this is me. You already know who I am. I'm lost. I have really never made that change. I ask for you to come into my life. Save me. Cleanse my heart. Save me from my sin. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask for you to make in me a new heart. And fill with that hole that's in there. With the only thing that truly matters. And that's your son. I thank you for saving me. I promise to live my life that glorifies you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed, is there anyone who said that prayer today? Amen. Is there anyone that may have rededicated your life today? That's a blessing to you. The time is now. Take some time this week to be on one-on-one -on -one with your Lord and Savior and reflect where you've been over the last day, week, month, year and see if there's changes that you need to make. And go ahead and make it. If every heart is cleared, every mind is set, you can open your eyes.